Hey everybody! Since I wasn't able to be in your class yesterday to talk about erosion, I thought I'd put a quick video together to show you how we can use a little bit of artwork and a little bit of fun and make a little bit of a mess to see how erosion works. So what we have here is a whole bunch of little pieces of paper that are ripped up into little squares and rectangles and whatnot. And what I've done is I am going to take them and I'm going to put them on the desk. I'm going to spread them out. I'm not going to make it perfect, but I'm going to have enough so it's kind of spread out around on our table. I would use two pieces of paper and just rip it up and make them the squares like this, you know, about the same size as a little bit smaller or a little bit better, about the same size as the first uh, part of your finger, your fingertip. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread it out again. I'm gonna take my finger and my finger is going to be the river. Now, if you look, you'll see that, I'm gonna spread out a little bit more. You'll see that there are some places on my desk where the bare wood is showing. We're going to pretend that those are the low spots in the geography and the way the land is made. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend, now water wants to always go to the lowest place. It always wants to go back to the ocean because that's sea level, that's the lowest it can go for the most part. So these are the low parts here, 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 and here. Now here's my finger. My finger is water coming from a mountain nearby. It's going to try to follow and go to the low spots. Now you might notice that as I do that, it slowly pushes stuff out of the way. Now that might be the only time the water moves there from that mountain, but more often than not we will have a stream and a river. And you'll notice that as I get big, it gets bigger from here. And every time I move my finger, you'll notice that things move and it gets wider over here where the river starts. The stream has a little bit of water and then it moves and it makes a bigger bit of water. So it goes from the top to the bottom. You'll notice that the water pushed the rock or the sediment, the dirt, the soil, all of those things off to the side. Now sometimes there might be flooding and flooding will adjust it a little bit. But that water keeps going. Now you might notice that the next time it has a little bit of a curve. You might also realize that if you use a pen or a pencil or an eraser it might do something different. It might hug the side and make your river that way. Notice that this bit of rock, a lot of rocks attached to each other and go downstream a little bit further. And I'll just keep going over and over and I'll keep making that river. I might have a lot of runoff one day and that will move all sorts of sediment to the ocean. Then we might have some more flooding, and then we'll have it make its way back down through the low points again. And this doesn't happen overnight. This takes thousands, millions of years to happen. Down here, we can have uh, a delta. If this was the ocean over here, we might have an island being formed just off the coast of sediment, but you can see that every time I move around, or I have a lot of water, what, three fingers maybe, it changes the way the river looks. A river never looks the same twice because the sediment around it, the dirt, the soil, the rocks, the stones, they will move with the water. And that, my friends, is erosion.
So I hope that helps you better understand and actually to create your own erosion process on your very own desk. Now make sure one of the things about erosion is that it does leave a mess wherever it happens and make sure you understand that even though you made a mess on your desk, even though you still have to clean up your erosion at the end of this. So have a great day and I hope you have some fun making your own rivers on your desk.